So Rishi Sunak has taken a huge gamble on his government's green promises and in the process divided his party, business and environmental groups. Critics, including car giant Ford, have accused him of losing ambition, but others say the move protects households from extra costs during a cost-of-living crisis. Well, joining us now is Business Secretary Kemi Badnock. Good to speak to you this morning. morning. Um, it is what everyone's talking about, isn't it? This kind of change in our road to net zero. Let's put it that way. Let's not accuse you of a U-turn or a watering down. What it looks like to many, though, is that the Prime Minister is prepared to let the planet burn in order to win votes from certain sections of his voters. Um, I think that that is quite wrong. The planet is not going to burn because we've changed the target from 100% to 80% by 2030, but keeping it in place till 2035. Well, what some people would argue that, that actually that was a target that was, uh, was risky anyway in terms of turning things around. And it's not just the changing of the target, is it? It's the steps to get there that lead you exactly. to reaching the target. Yes, so yes, exactly. what's in place to make that work? So what we're trying to do is make sure that the transition to net zero is done in a fair and proportionate way. If you look at what's happened with electricity costs, for example, since Russia's war in Ukraine, the economics of an electric vehicle are not the same as they were when we first put these rules into place. So we still want uh, to reduce our emissions. We still want to help tackle uh, climate change, but making sure that people can afford to do so, whether it's in the vehicles that they buy or in terms of the changes that they need to make to their homes. Uh, that's what the Prime Minister has been talking about. And in fact, some of the changes that had been recommended by the Committee on Climate Change were just simply not feasible. There's some homes that are, it's just not appropriate for them to put in a heat pump. If you live in a flat, that doesn't quite work. There's some homes where you just can't make those changes. So we are putting in place, uh, uh, we are putting in place a policy that the public will be able to consent to. If we're going to hit net zero, we need to take everybody with us. Just a few months ago, we had ministers on this programme committing to these targets of 2030. What's happened in those last few months? Uh, well, what's happened... We've, these are discussions that have been taking place. We haven't wanted to announce on anything until we were absolutely sure. And what's happened is that now is the right time to make the announcements. Now we are sure. So for those and ministers we've also that came had, on and then uh, stood by those promises and uh, stood there when they were asked about them just a few months ago, it's really embarrassing, though, because they were there saying, absolutely, we are committed to these targets, and now no, a couple I of minutes later, you, everything's shifting. Well, many of those ministers will now have information which they didn't have at the time. What we can't uh, do as government is say something and then not change when the facts have changed. And the facts are that when we look at the economic impact of some of these uh, policies, they're not things that the public will consent to. And we are so world-leading. We have over-delivered on our carbon budgets. We have cut emissions faster than uh, pretty much anyone else. We have the space to make a change which puts us in line with many countries in the EU, with the US. We're still doing better than others. One of the facts that people will argue that has changed is panic from the Prime Minister. The fact that uh, he's very worried about the next election. The fact that the uh, West Ryslip by-election was won by the Tories by a slim margin, but actually mm -hmm. won on the back of the extension of the ULES. And suddenly it feels like, you know what, maybe there's a, tr there's a way we can get a tranche of voters who aren't for these green policies. Let's shift. Let's go and get these uh, voters back into the Tory party, because actually we're terrified that we're going to lose this next election and we're going to be trounced. That's complete, completely false, because if that was the case, then we would be removing the target to get to net zero, which we, which we haven't done. Well, These you are conversations... know that would be politically just... disastrous. <laughs> so well, one well, thing but, is but, a risk, um, the just, other if, is a if disaster. I can just, if I can, just, if I can yeah. just finish. These are discussions that we've been having for a long time. I've been giving representations to the Prime Minister from business, and people will hear a lot from big business, but actually many of the smaller businesses... I'm going to the Federation of small business this afternoon, many of the smaller businesses who don't have that voice have expressed concerns. We have to do what is right for the, uh, for the British people. We in government are all members of parliament. We all have constituents. People make representations to us. We look at this as well as advice from organisations like the Climate Change Committee, as well as business and other stakeholders to come to the right decision. But what we're not going to do is keep in place a policy when the facts have changed. Everybody knows that uh, batteries and electric vehicles are mainly supplied by China, 
Before the pandemic, most people were OK with that. Now we know what happens if you're over-reliant on any particular country. We need to make sure that we have energy security as well as net zero. There is a reason why the Prime Minister renamed that department uh, earlier this year in about February, March. So that, go that was long before there was any by-election. He was already making sure mm -hmm. that energy security was the priority and he's seeing through his commitment. You mentioned uh, lithium batteries. There are other sorts of energy that could make us less reliant on world economy. That's right. Rather than changing these targets, why not introduce more help for those that would be helpful? Wind, for instance, is one. Great concerns about how those energies connect up to the network. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear much detail from so, the Prime so, Minister so, about uh, that. But there will be more detail. So that was one of the things that he mentioned. Uh, the grid connection uh, needs to be significantly upgraded because people need places to plug their uh, electric cars into to charge. There's a lot of range anxiety. So there is a lot of investment that is going into ensuring that our electricity grid is one that is fit for the future. But also we're investing in technologies that haven't quite come on stream yet, like hydrogen, for example like carbon capture under storage in order to remove emissions. So there is, there, there's lots of good stuff there's that we're doing. There's lots of work going on. OK, yes. of course he's a salesman, the Prime Minister. He's selling a new idea yesterday. Mm -hmm. But why did he come out and say that he's now going to scrap a meat tax, that nobody should have to have seven bins? Was there ever a policy, government policy to impose a meat tax? What was he so, actually so, scrapping so these, there? These were proposals that had come out from the Committee uh, uh, on Climate Change. So we have a committee called the CCC, mm -hmm. which informs almost all of the policy that comes into, into reality. But it In was fact, one officials... of many policies that didn't go ahead. So, no, no, you know... no, no, no. The, the, these, these were policies that were due to... These were proposals that were due to come in in order for us to meet future carbon budgets. So, oh, I, so I, you I, were I... going to impose a meat tax as these, government these, policy? Th 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 well, no, we're not going to do that, but this was advice which we were given. On the previous show that I was on, people were criticising us for not following the Climate Change uh, Committee's advice. The seven bins uh, was in the Environment Act 2021. So there are lots of bits uh, of policy which we're looking at again, and we just don't think that the public so will be able to wear these seven things. seven bins. I thought it was seven streams of recycling. Seven I don't streams think... of bins. Seven streams, seven bins. Well, it was, it is that a is difference. something that is... Uh, well, it is either difference. way, either way, we're scrapping it, and it was in the um, Environment Act 2021. Okay. Can we talk about the division that this has led to within your mm. party? Because whatever happens, you know, what the Prime Minister is desperate for is cohesion. He keeps saying he wants mm. to take everybody with him. You've already talked about, and we know that um, Zach Goldsmith has come out. He's mm. already called for a general election in reaction to this. Uh, Chris Skidmore, of course, uh, he said, he's come out and said he wants the Prime Minister to think again before making the greatest mistake of his premiership. How are you going to persuade those Tories, those prominent Tories with a strong voice, that actually mm. this decision isn't the greatest mistake that the Prime Minister has made? Uh, well, everybody is entitled to their opinion. What I would say is that the majority of the party supports uh, what the Prime Minister is doing. You would have seen in the audience uh, members of Parliament from the Conservative Environment Network, so across, across the board. Zach Goldsmith is one voice, as is Chris Kidmore. There will be some people who are apprehensive about this, but I don't see uh, any sort of significant division. And also, many of these comments came in before the plans had actually been announced. Right, your business secretary... Uh... The majority of uh, the car industry that certainly is looking to provide electric cars are mm. very concerned by this. In order to sell cars, in order to have a demand for that industry, they need confidence, yeah. they need firmness. They need to know that, that if they invest on greater infrastructure so people can charge their cars to make it, them want to buy them more, that you are going to back them. Have you decided that you're not worried about that part of the industry because you haven't given them that confidence? Or what's your plan? We, we talk to the car industry uh, fairly frequently. I certainly do as business secretary. You would have looked at the investment that we helped uh, make with uh, BMW Mini, who've made an all-electric uh, mini plant in Oxfordshire. You look at the £4 billion uh, that Tata uh, has invested uh, in a gigafactory for Jaguar Land Rover. So w it, they need to look at what we're doing as, as well in order to get that confidence. And I, as I said earlier, it isn't just the auto industry. These are policies that are going... 
across the board. We do support them. We do want to see uh, an electric vehicle transition. It's the right thing to do in the long term. We just want to make sure that people can afford it. The auto industry is not going to do well if it makes cars and nobody's buying them. That's, okay. that's the bottom line. But it can't line. provide cars without the infrastructure and the backing from you, can it? Well, yes, and we're still putting that infrastructure in place and we are still backing them. We're going to have to leave it there. Kemi Badadot, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.